say what H of 3 means? Expressive. Uh, I can't express it, but I know where I drew it. Okay, where does it go? It goes by the 2.25. It goes by it? Where the x is, yeah, it goes in place of x. Okay, so uh, we can say one thing that it means is plug in 3 for x. Right? And find y. That's what it means. It means what's y when x is 3? Even? How do you tell me you're wrong? Um, Okay, well that's what it means. So we're supposed to put it in for x. So we'll just go ahead and do it right, and then I will ask you to tell us that. So we got 2.25 times x. X is now 3, so 2.25 times 3 is 6.75. Ethan, what did you do? Wrong? H by itself. Okay, H by itself. I so I'm gonna address both of those things. Katie, you're right, he didn't put three in for x, he just put it next to it. This is a really common mistake that I see a lot when we start using function notation. Um, uh, some students just can't let go of their familiarity with parentheses means multiplication. So they'll take this to mean multiply this by 3. Okay? But that's not what it means. h is just the name of the function. x is the input for h, the function h. Okay? So related to that, we're also not trying to solve for h. We're, we don't need to get h by itself. h isn't some variable. We're trying to figure out the value of uh, h is just the name of the function, and 3 is the thing we're supposed to plug into the function. There's nothing to do on this side of the, it's not even really an equation in the way that we think of equations, like equations that can be solved. It is just, this is still, uh, well, this, this one's wrong. This is still h of 3 and you're done. What this means is, well, we, we said right here, plug in 3 for x and find y. This is y, this is y, and this is x. y and h of x, they're the same thing. Okay. y is the output. Now if we say y is 6.75, it's kind of not very specific, but if we say h of 3, we mean that for the function h, when you plug 3 in for x, what you get out as the output for y is 6.75. This is quite a bit of information just writing h for for x, and this is the output that I got. So in the end, not only do you know what you got out, but you're also reminding yourself what you put in for x. So Ryder, he multiplies the function by, by 3. And he should put 3 in for x, he mistakenly multiplies all the functions. The next one, Andra has found the value of x incorrectly. Uh, this is her work. So you can see she made a mistake in her first step, and that's what I want you to tell me what's, what's her mistake in the first step. saying what she should have done or what she did do that was the wrong thing to do. But uh, what's going on here? What, what did she do? What was she supposed to do? She plugged it in for um, x, but she isn't exactly the answer. But this is the answer, what is that? Exactly, yes, exactly. Uh, it's saying that, like, if we go back to instructions, it says that the Function has the given value. Because here's the given value. They've given you the value of negative 6. The function has this value, not x. The 
Okay, so there's two things. There's an x value, an input, and the value of the function, the output. There's lots of different ways we refer to these things. We call it x, we can call it input. We can call it y, or we can call it the value of the function. Uh, we can also call it output. So, like Katie said, this is really just the thing that you get. This is the output. It's the result. So once we take negative 2 times some number that we don't know yet, we get negative 6. That's the output, or the answer, if you like to say the answer. Uh, so negative 2x, we're going to add 21 to both sides. Get 15, and then divide both sides by negative 2. X is negative 15 halves. So to figure out what x would have to be to give you an output of negative 6. Good? All agree on that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so she plugs in negative 6 for x when. If she had read the instructions carefully, she might have caught her mistake. Um, it tells her what she's supposed to find. And there's I kind of put the instructions back in here so that we can look at it. Like, look at what she wound up with. What about that tells you, well, after reading the instructions, read the instructions, at the end you should have found something. So at the so at the end you should have found negative six. Is, I think that's what you mean. At the end. I mean when you do all your work and you get here, you should have found a number, and that number should be for what? We talked about that in our discussion group, and I recognize it. Uh, a value for x. We're looking for the value of x. When Audrey gets done, what does she have? Does she have an x value? No, she doesn't. She's not able to write x equals. She's saying that n of negative 6 is negative 9. Which is true. If you plug in negative 6, you will get negative 9. But that's not what she's supposed to find. She's supposed to find what x would have to be. So even in the instructions, it says find the value of x. But she doesn't find the value of x. She finds the value of y. The thing that she mistakenly does is uh, think that negative 6 is supposed to be x when it says the value of the function is negative 6 and the value of the function is the same as y. Dominic did a good job. How does Dominic know the plot, this blue point right here? recognizes that this is in the form of y, the output, equals mx plus b. So this fits that old mold, that old situation where he was graphing a, a slope-intercept form. He knows that this is the y-intercept. Y-intercept is 7. Plots that value of y is 7. And after that, Draw the rest of the line. Tommy? Tommy goes by the slope, which is in front of x, basically 1, which is 1 over 1. So you say x is 1? Or you know how the slope is in front of x? In front of x. Yeah. So x and in front of x are different. But yeah, in front of x is 1. And we could write 1 as 1 over 1, and then we have to rise over 1, up 1 over 1. There we go. Uh, 
that's the slope. All right. That's all I have for the quiz. You guys have any questions in the homework? going to rewrite this a little bit. This, just this little thing might help out. We could write x first in 6 seconds. And then if we use the same idea as we just did graphing this one, it's almost identical. It's only slightly different. How is it slightly different? Well, that's true. It started out that way. But 6 plus x, x plus 6, same thing, so we just rewrote it that way. So how is this one going to differ from number 27? Yeah, you go up 6 instead of 7. The y intercept is 6 instead of 7. There's the y intercept, but we also have a slope of 1, just like 27 did. Same deal. deal here that we're going to keep coming back to and focusing on is that this equation that we're, we're messing around with has a context, meaning that x represents something and y represents something, and we want to uh, test our ability to understand that context. So the average price of a movie ticket in the United States from 1980 to 2000 can be modeled by the function f of x equals Plus. This is pretty key here, where x is the number of years since 1980. Okay. So they want us to, in part A, they want us to graph it, they want us to find the domain, and find the range. So those three things they want us to do. Um, well, if we're going to use a function to talk about the years since 1980, we probably won't say negative five years, right? since 1980, that's kind of a weird idea. So we'll start at zero and work our way from there, okay? And then also here's our f of x axis. I label it that way because that's the name of our output in this particular case. Well, the first thing we should do is kind of decide what the scale of our axes is. So that's a good idea. Um, what does x is 0 represent? What does a 0 value for x represent? I'd have to look at the problem. Um, no, no. 0. 0, yeah, 0. For what? It represents 0. 0. It represents a value. What value does it represent? number of years since 1980. Okay, so x in general represents the years since 1980. Specifically, zero means then what year? 1980. Zero years since 1980 would be 1980. Okay. So x equals one, what would that mean? Yeah? Um, 1981. 1981, one year since 1980 would be 1981. 
How far should we go? Yeah? 20. 20. Why 20? Because it's in between 1980 and 2000. And 2000. So it goes to 2000. 2000 is 20 years since 1980. So there we go. Well, you may realize that you may not. But of those three things, graphing it, finding the domain, and finding the range, we actually can do one of those things right now. One of those things can we do? Uh, we kind of, we've already done it, really. We just need to state it. What's that? The range. What's the definition of the range? Why what say again? Um, isn't the range just the output? The range, yes. The range is a is a set of numbers. Okay? It's this grouping of numbers that we get out of the function. Have we found that? No. Have we found all the numbers that can come out of the function? No, we have. We that would be on this axis, we haven't addressed that axis at all. What have we found? The domain. The set of all the things that go into the function. Right? So we can define it as a domain. What is the domain? Yeah? One, all the way to 20. Do we have to start at 1? You just do 1, 2, and 3 for the domain. What's that? You just do 1, 2, and 3 for the domain. 1, 2, and 3. How about, OK, so this is the number of years since 1980. Could we do 1.5, 1 and a half years? Okay. One year and six months? what it was like in June of 1981. So we go 1.5. It'll be better to find out which, what, what it is each year. Right. I don't know if it's better. It'd be best. I don't know if it's best either. It might be what you prefer, but could we, using this equation, could we calculate what a movie ticket costs in June of 1981? Good. Uh, 1.5 would mean a year and a half since 1980. That would be, you know, in the summertime, in the summer of 1981. Go uh, to 3.75. That'd be uh, sometime in the fall, winter of fall and winter of what year? Of what? 3.75. Yeah, 1983, and we're in the, the latter part of that year, summer, not summer, winter, or, or maybe fall, right in there. Okay, so those are valid inputs. So we don't want it just limited to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So what's the domain? Connor wasn't far off, we're just trying to expand it a little bit. So the domain, the domain is set of all the inputs. The, what kinds of things do we put into this function? Put outputs into it. What kinds of things do we put right here for x? I think the answer is probably too easy. We put numbers there, right? Yeah. Numbers there. What numbers are valid? Whatever we put in for x, we just figure out what would come out. So it has to be equal. Can we put one in there? 0.5, 19.6, 0.5. Can we put 0.5 in there? Yeah. Okay, so what is our domain? What are the numbers in the domain? Yeah. Anything between 0 and 20. Anything between 0 and 20. Anything at all. 0 is the lower, lower bound. Uh, X can be anything that's bigger than 0 and less than 20, or it can be equal to 0 and less than 20. So we could write it that way, this way. You could write it just in words. Anything between 0 and 20, you can just write it out in words. <coughs> so now let's look at the output. Let's look at this function. Do you think this function, like the outputs of this function, keep getting bigger, or do they keep going down and getting smaller? Keep getting bigger. Why do you think that? Because you're getting 
you're, you're getting higher in your how how many years have gone by so uh -huh. it would grow with that well i agree that that does happen it's not quite a full string of logic the years are going up but as years go up things could go down as well like you can have a function where the years go up but something goes down oil we have? Okay. So run out of oil. So uh, how many barrels we have left goes down as the years go up. So just because the years go up doesn't mean that the, that the output of some function is going to go up. What about this function though? When you think about the years going up, what makes you think that the output will also continue to go up? People like movies. People like movies. Yes. In our, in our experience, the price of movies goes up. We know that from experience, but I want to know from these these numbers and letters and symbols, what makes you think that if I keep putting in bigger and bigger years, I'll get bigger and bigger outputs? Yeah? Because you're adding 2.75. So this number is going to keep getting bigger as x gets bigger, and then we're going to add 2.75 to that, so it's going to get bigger. Now, if we were subtracting this number from 2.75, then it would be going down, because the thing that you're subtracting would be getting bigger and but yeah, clearly, since we're adding and the numbers are always positive, we're going to be going up and up and up. And up. Okay. Uh, so let's start with 1980. What's the cost of a, uh, a movie ticket in 1980? Yes. $2.85. $2.00 what? Um, $0.85. Cents. How'd you get that? By one? Oh, wait. 1980. Oh, it would actually be zero. So $2.75. So it would just be 2 We wouldn't be adding anything on. We would be at year zero. So we'll put 2 right here. We know there is a point at 0, 2.75. Okay, that's, that's what we know. Um, how about if we go all the way to 2000? What's the cost of a movie ticket in 2000? Really? Uh, $4.75. How'd you do that? Um, I just took uh, 0.10 times 20 and then plus 2.75. So just use the function, put the input in there, see what the output is. Yep. Okay, so there is 20, 475. Well, I have, I have two data points here. This is 475. <coughs> well, that just so happens. Uh, before we can graph it, what else can we determine now? Maybe we found those two things. The range. The range. Now we know how, what numbers we'll find in the outputs. What will be our range? Connor? Whatever the cost is. Whatever the cost is. So what, what values can we have as the, the output, the cost? You tell me. What, what actual numbers can come out of this function? Like for zero, it was seven. Where's two seventy-five? Two seventy-five. So two seventy-five would be the smallest. Mm -hmm. So that'd be the lower end. Seventy-five. Be the low end. Okay. F of x. That's the output. How big can it get? All the way to four seventy-five. Four seventy-five. Because we said we we're going to stop at year twenty after you know twenty years after nineteen eighty. So we'll go all the way up to 475. Can't get any smaller than 275. That's the cheapest the ticket is within this domain. And uh, this is the most expensive it'll get. It's going to start stop at 20 years past 1980. And then we can graph it. We can connect these. Should we connect it with like a curvy thing? Or what should, kind of a shape should we use? Curve? Straight line? No, not straight line. Well, it's either a curve or it's either a straight line. I mean, there's not really any other options. Curve. Straight line. A straight line. Curve. Why a straight line? Because it goes up at even intervals. Oh, no. Because, like, it depends on the economy. Uh huh. Like, like if it was during the Great Depression, then it would be really, like, whatever time period, it would be easier to do all 
So you you're, you're thinking, hey, I, I know that this, this function, this graph, is going to be about movie tickets. And I don't think movie tickets go in the, up in this predictable straight line kind of a way. So realistically, it seems like a graph about the cost of movie tickets would fluctuate, depending. But, but here's what we're doing. We're not being very realistic because we're using this equation to tell us what the, what the cost of a ticket is. So realistically, probably that the graph of the cost of movie tickets over 20 years would be kind of curvy. But if we're using this equation, what kind of graph would this equation be? A straight line. What about this equation can I look at and it tells me this is going to be a straight line? Hildy, what did you say? Remind. You said it was going to be a straight line. And what were you explaining then? Well, I, I thought it would be a straight line because, like you said, you we're not using a realistic yeah. data. And um, I, I also thought it'd be. I mean, if it was going to be a curved line, if we did use realistic data, which way would it curve? I mean, we don't know which way it would curve if we did use a curve. Okay, but what were you saying before that? Before Katie said anything, you you were saying some words that. I don't remember. You said it goes up by. It go up. Ah, it goes up by certain intervals. Like yeah, we go over one year, we go up one dime. Over one year, up what? You see what I'm saying? Right, we keep putting it in the next year, and this, this would represent a dime. Right? One dime per year. Well, that's, that's a slope, isn't it? Move over and up the same amount. Go over, go up, that's rise and run. So we're describing a line. So that doesn't look like a line. It sounds like it's a line. Also, if we think about it, this looks like m x plus b. y equals mx plus b. We got a slope times x to the fifth power, x is to the fifth power, plus you can see our y-intercept at 2.75. That is what it is. And our slope is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 over 1. We go up 0.1, a dime, and over one year. Up 0.1 and over one year. Up a dime and over a year. Up a dime and over a year. Good, good question. Any other questions? says to find, right, it says find the value of x when f of x equals 4.55. Now notice, it doesn't say f of 4.55, x isn't 4.55, what's 4.55? What's that? What is 4.55? represents the output of the function, that is the part that equals 4.55. We can just directly substitute 4.55 for f of x, because we're saying they're equivalent. Such a substitution. 4.55, that's f of x, equals 0.10x plus 2.75. That makes sense? f of x. The output is 4.55. Not the input, but the answer, the result. The output. We do these so often. Let's see if we want to solve for x, we're going to subtract 2.75 from both sides. 4.55 minus 4.55 minus 2.75. Uh, right, 1.8. After we get 1.8, we're going to divide by 0.1. So we did what they asked us to do. We, uh, we understand functions and input and output. And that is saying that the output is 4.55. So we made the output 4.55 and found the value of x. But like I said, that this equation has a context. It fits within some description of a scenario, right? This, the scenario being the cost of movie tickets in years going by. So when the output is 4.55, the input is 18. What does that mean in the context of the problem? What 
which is x is 18. So what year would that be? 1980. 1998. You say that since 1980? <laughs> <laughs> 1980 plus 18 more years is 1998. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody last last class I think said 1998. So you're a little bit closer than they were. <laughs> so 1998. Uh, so what about 1998? What do we? What factual information do we have about 1998? Um. <laughs> oh, it cost a dollar. It cost four dollars, four dollars and fifty-five cents, and I was born. You really want to know where that is? So in 1998, you were born, and if your parents went to see a movie that year, it cost uh, about four fifty-five. Let's pass in our homework, please.